Hello Year 12. Today we're going to start a new unit, Unit 6, called Equilibria. And today we're looking at Part A, what do we mean by chemical equilibrium? So if you go to the school resources on Office 365, you'll find Unit Guide 6, which is on equilibria. Today we're going to cover the first part, Part A, the fact that many chemical reactions are reversible. In a reversible reaction at equilibrium, the forward and reverse reaction proceed at equal rates and the concentration of the reactants and products remain constant. So as part of your study, you should be logging not only what you're covering, but how you're covering it. So please make sure that you are using your unit guide and have a, a paper copy at hand whilst you're watching this video. Equally, you should also have a notebook uh, or a sheet of lined paper, uh, a pen, a pencil, all the usual equipment to be making notes as you're watching this video. Just before we get stuck into things, I'd like to read out to you this first part of the unit guide, uh, which introduces the unit, which is on chemical equilibria, Le Chatelier's principle and Kc, the equilibrium constant. In contrast with kinetics, You'll recall that kinetics was the last unit that we studied, which is a study of how quickly reactions occur. A study of equilibria indicates how far reactions will go. Le Chatelier's principle can be used to predict the effects of changes in temperature, pressure and concentration on the yield of a reversible reaction. This has important consequences for many industrial processes. The further study of the equilibrium constant Kc considers how the mathematical expression for the equilibrium constant enables us to uh, calculate how an equilibrium yield will be influenced by the concentration of the reactants and the products. So today, as I've described, we're going to look at equilibrium in terms of the forward and reverse reactions. In the next uh, video, we'll look at part B, Le Chatelier's principle. And finally, in the last video in the equilibrium series, we'll look at the equilibrium constant, Kc. However, without further ado, let's get stuck into things. So I want you to imagine that you've been to the gym and at the gym, uh, you uh, got changed uh, into your normal clothes after working out and you threw your dirty sports kit into your sports bag and took it home. Now, I'm going to focus on a dirty, sweaty pair of socks. So I want you to imagine that you have a dirty, sweaty pair of socks in your bag. Now, if you're clever, when you get home, you'll put your uh, kit out to dry before washing it. So I want you to imagine that you've got a sweaty sock on a washing line. This is an example of an open system. The sweat in the sock is mostly water, liquid water, and over time, all of the water will evaporate out of the sock. It will dry out. That's because the liquid water is evaporating and becoming water vapour, gaseous water. Because it's an open system, the water can evaporate out of the sock into the air, uh, and so the sock dries out. Conversely, if you're lazy, you'll leave your sweaty sock in your gym bag. This is an example of a closed system. So the sweat, the liquid water in your sock, initially will evaporate and will evaporate into the air surrounding the bag, forming gaseous water. However, as the concentration of the water in the air increases, eventually it will get to the stage whereby the water will condense back down onto the sock. And this is a reversible reaction. You have a forward reaction, which involves the, con uh, the evaporation of water from the liquid phase to the gas phase. But you also have uh, the reverse reaction, where water vapour is condensing and turning into liquid water. What does this mean for your sock and for the situation? Well, eventually the rate of condensation is going to equal the rate of evaporation. At this point, we say 
that the reaction is at equilibrium. This is what we mean by equilibrium, where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. This can only occur in a closed system. In this particular system, the sock will never dry out because it is a closed system. The matter inside the bag can't escape, so the sock never dries out. So if you're clever, when you get home, you'll remove your sports kit from your bag straight away so that it can dry out before you wash it. OK, so here's a couple of diagrams. I'd like you to pause the video, take a look at these diagrams and think about what they mean. OK, so what you hopefully will have realised is the size of the bubbles represents the concentration. So in the top example, the blue bubble, the reactants, is a, a greater concentration than the products. In the bottom example, it's the other way around. The, con the products are at a higher concentration compared to the reactants. And both of these systems are reversible reactions. The question that I've got for you now, though, is are these systems in equilibrium? Can you tell? Pause the video and have a think about it. OK, it's difficult to explain this, so I'm going to come on to a little example. But actually, looking at these systems, you can't tell whether e either system is at equilibrium. Because the only way you'll know is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. And we'll talk about the consequences of that. I want you to imagine that you've got two containers. A container on the left, which is half full of water, and an empty container on the right. Let's suppose that each of these containers, the container on the left represents the reactants, and the container on the right represents the products. And much like our previous example, the size of the bubble here represents the concentrations of either the reactants or the products. In this example, on the left, the reactants are at high concentration and the products, well, there are no products, so it is at zero concentration. And let's suppose that we take a bucket and we remove some of the water from the reactants and pour it into the container containing the products. This is the forward reaction. This means that we will form some products. That's the forward reaction from reactants going forward to products. However, at some particular point, let's say that we, the products, are also able to decompose into the reactants. So I take a different bucket and I pour some of the products back into the reactants. So there is a forward reaction and there's a reverse, uh, a backward reaction, both of which are occurring at the same time, at the same rate. What will this mean for the level, the concentration of the reactants, and for the concentration of the products? Pause the video and have a think about it. What this means for the concentration of the reactants and the products, if the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the backward reaction, it means that the concentrations of the reactants and the products will not change in time. In other words, the level of water in each container will not change. It will remain constant after a certain point. Let's represent that uh, graphically in a moment. However, before we do that, there's two key things that we need to think about. We need to think about when a system is at equilibrium. If you've listened carefully, hopefully you will have recognised that a system is at equilibrium if the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. And there's no way of telling in these two uh, examples 
whether that's the case. Unless, of course, you measure the concentration in time and the concentrations of both the reactants and the products do not change in time. OK, let's take a look at that graphically. Here's a graph of the concentration against time. The reactant's concentration is represented in blue. The product concentration is represented in red. And initially, at time equals zero, the reactants are at high concentration and the products are at low concentration. However, as the reaction proceeds, the reactants are converted into products. So that means that the reactants decrease in concentration, whereas the products increase in concentration. Eventually, though, the rate of the forward reaction, that is to say the rate at which the reactants form the products, will be the same as the rate at which the products decompose and reform the reactants. At that point, the system is at equilibrium. And you can see that on this graph because there is a purple line, a purple dashed vertical line, at that point when the concentration of the reactants and the products is no longer changing in time, where there is a horizontal red line and a horizontal blue line, that is uh, the system at equilibrium. So, could you pause the video please? I'd like you to copy the graph, label it, but also describe it. And I'll show you mine in a moment once you finish that. OK, hopefully now what you've recognised is that a system is said to be at equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. That is the situation on the far left hand side of the graph prior to that dashed vertical purple line. There you've got reactants forming products uh, and eventually you'll get to the stage where the products decompose and reform the reactants. However, at equilibrium, the concentrations of both the reactants and products do not change in time because as the reactants are converted to products at the same rate, the products are converted back into the reactants. Next time, the, uh, in the next video, we'll look at part B, which is Le Chatelier's principle. If you have questions in the meantime, please uh, ask me on Microsoft Teams as ever, or you can, of course, always email me and I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. Thank you for watching. See you next time.